Hello and welcome to Science Comprehensive. My name is Ken Gaudi and in this video I will tell you how I go about learning a difficult song. Now learning a difficult song is just like learning an easy song. The only difference is that it's going to take you longer to learn the song, to memorize the song. You're going to have to put more effort into it. But if you can learn a difficult song then that will give you a really good sense of achievement when you're able to play that song. Also learning difficult songs will actually stretch your, stretch your abilities so it will improve your saxophone playing. And every time you learn a difficult song, it will get easier to learn the next difficult song. So I encourage you to try and stretch yourself and learn some of these difficult songs instead of just playing some of these easier songs. When I go about learning a difficult song, the first thing I do is to get the sheet music. So I can get the sheet music and then start playing it immediately. If you can't read sheet music, then let me encourage you to start. I have uploaded many videos on how to read sheet music and music theory. It will not take you a long time to be able to read sheet music. The difficulty comes in sight reading well, and that's gonna take you many years. So if you start now and read some sheet music every day, then within a few years, you should be good at it. Every day when I practice, I practice for about four hours a day. During that time, I will be playing from some kind of sheet music. Maybe it might be a transcription on YouTube. But what I want to do is to improve my sight reading ability. And I've seen over the years, as I continue to play from sheet music, my, um, my ability to sight read has improved. And if you can sight read, it opens up a whole host of um, avenues for you because you can play from sheet music contained in Omnibooks. And if you're into improvisation, you're able to read these books on improvisation and understand it easily because you're, un you're, you're able to understand the notation written within the book. Now, as I said, the first thing I do when learning a difficult song is to get the sheet music. This may mean downloading it from the internet or if it's a, um, a transcription on YouTube, then I'll play it on my laptop and take some screenshots of it and then print it off and then place it on my wall. The reason why I place it on my wall is so that I can have everything laid out so I do not have to worry about turning pages and getting lost in the music. Um, I could write on it anything that would help me to uh, sight read the music, maybe some the, the, the alternate fingerings that I might have to use or writing down certain notes that I might get confused about or anything that might help me to sight read it, I'll, I'll just write it on, on the wall. The song that I've been recently learning is the Patrick Bartley song, After You've Gone, on the Emmett Cohen channel. I think it's number 52. You probably heard it. When I first heard this song, it sounded really great to me. So I thought, let me try and learn it. So I got the sheet music. And if it's a popular song, if it sounds very good, then you're more than likely to be able to find it on the internet and quickly searching for the transcription for this rendition. I did find three transcriptions and that's by a quick search. I'm sure if I continue searching, I'll find some other transcriptions. The only thing that you need to um, realize is that when somebody transcribed music, it may not be exactly correct. It's what they are actually hearing with the equipment that they've got. And so comparing these three transcriptions, there is a difference of opinion as to um, where the half tonguing or ghost notes occur. There is a difference as to what are the exact notes that are actually being played and there is a difference in the rhythm at certain times where some transcriptions transcribe it as triplets whereas others transcribe it as eighth notes. So that's something to be aware of but on the whole if it's played at pace then uh, they'll, they'll more or less sound, sound alike and basically that's what you want. Now once I've got the sheet music and it's up on my wall, the next thing I do is to get the audio file. Now there are lots of software out there that you can use to extract the audio from the internet. So you can have it as an audio file or you can play it and record it on your phone and then take that audio file. And then what you do with the audio file is you take that audio file and put it into another software that can slow down the music and can loop certain sections of it. I did see a video of a saxophone player who used a free uh, software called Time Stretch, and he did a whole video on how to use Time Stretch. I'll put that in the description. And I saw another video of a person doing something similar with a paid app called AnyTune Pro, which does basically the same thing. You're able to slow down the music. You're able to change the pitch of the music. You're able to loop certain sections of the music. 
Personally, because I make videos for YouTube, I do have some kind of video editing software and most video editing software would do the same thing. So if it's a transcription and you've got the music and you've got the notes as well, then I basically just take the, 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 the video file and the audio file as an MP4 file. So basically what I do is I will play the song on my laptop and then I'll get a screen capturing device that will capture the video and the audio as an MP4 file. I use a free software called OBS Studio from their website, which is a screen capturing software. So I play the transcription and copy it by recording what is playing on my laptop screen. I used to use a free Windows screen capturing software, but had problems with the file when I put them into Premiere Pro. Once I have the MP3 file, I put it in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the movie editing software that I use to make my videos. Then I slow it down at a speed that is manageable, but still sounds like the original. This is the start of the song at normal speed. I slow it down to around 80%. I could slow it down further, but the more you slow it down, the more you lose the essence of the song and it begins to sound like something else. Then I start to play it and slice it into sections containing phrases. I do this as I'm practicing. This allows me to find certain places in the music quickly because I know where the phrases start and stop because it has been spliced. Then I can move these handles to where I want them to loop certain sections so I can listen to certain sections over and over again. So the obvious question is how do you go about learning a song which is supposed to be played at a pace that you are not used to? Well, if you were to watch a lot of these YouTube videos on it, if you were to read articles about it, if you were to listen to a saxophone teacher, they'll probably all tell you that what you should do is to slow the music right down to a very slow pace so that you can play the music and not make any mistakes and play it in time. Then once you can do that, then you turn up the tempo speed up the metronome and then play it at a faster pace and then when you can do that then increase it again and you keep on increasing it until you're able to play it at the fast pace. Now the idea behind it is that if you can play a piece of music correctly um, in time at a slow pace then when you play at a fast pace you're not going to make any of these sloppy mistakes and you're going to have good form. The other idea behind it is if you play something at a fast place, pace and you're, you keep on making mistakes, then what you're going to do, you're going to learn your mistakes, kind of like muscle memory, you're going to learn your mistakes and not learn how it's supposed to be played and it's just going to be counterproductive and you're going to just take longer to, to learn this song. So they would say, slow it down and then, and then speed it up. But Personally, the way I learn, because everybody learns differently, I find that learn that learning to play music at fast pace is difficult, but equally trying to learn this music at a slow pace is also difficult. So I will start learning it at a decent pace, probably a pace that's even challenging for me. And as I try to play the, the phrases, I'm gonna make mistakes, but that's what I wanna do. I wanna play the phrase, and find out where I'm making these mistakes because when I know where I'm making the mistakes then I can actually act on it and then find out why am I making these, mis these mistakes and what can I do to cor correct these mistakes. So I'll play the phrase, I may make a few mistakes, then I'll play it again, make some mistakes, I think about what mistakes did I make, where did it happen and then the next time I'm consciously trying to correct these mistakes and then finally a point will come where because I'm constantly trying to correct it, I find that I don't learn my mistakes but eventually what happens, a breakthrough happens and then I play it correctly. And then once I play it correctly, from then on every time I play it, I seem to play it more correct than wrong until it's fully memorized and I can just play it and not make any mistakes. So now the reason why we get the music file or video music file and we put it into some kind of software and then slow it down and then loop certain sections 
is because we are listening out for certain things. Now, when you loop a section over and over again, it may be because you're having difficulty with the rhythm. So when you loop it, you can listen to that rhythm over and over again and ingrain it in your mind. You could sing along to the rhythm, so that, again, that will actually help you to internalize the rhythm. So when it comes to playing on the saxophone, it'll be easier. But the other thing that you want to listen out for is the articulation and the accents in the music because when you get the sheet music that will probably not be on it all of the accent marks will not be on it the bends may not be written on it and definitely any markings to give some indication on how to tongue the note will not be on it so you're going to have to listen carefully to the music over and over again and try and hear where the accents are as it's being played so that you can play it similarly because it is these accents and the articulation that's actually going to bring the music alive otherwise when you learn it and play it it's not going to sound the same it's just going to sound dead because you're not putting in the correct articulation and the accents as the uh, the person played it originally so looking at this first phrase when i slow down the music and loop it listening out for the articulation trying to work out where these ghost notes or half tonguing occurs then according to my hearing it occurs in these three places marked in red. Now you may disagree and that's fine because the three transcriptions also had different opinions as to where the ghost notes occur. But whichever viewpoint you take, you would either have to play those ghost notes or leave them out or lengthen the notes before the ghost notes in order to get the same feel for the music. The notes that I've circled in blue would then be slurred. So here is the phrase slowed right down. You can definitely see from the waveform that a ghost note appears in this position. So now to end a rather long video, let me just say two things. The first thing is that the most difficult part in learning a difficult song is staying motivated. You're going to come across passages that are quite challenging and you may get discouraged and want to uh, give up. You may listen to another song and then get sidetracked and then print off another piece of sheet music and start playing that instead. Um, you're just going to have to find a way to keep motivated. Uh, try not to be consumed by the music, try not to try and learn it all as quickly as possible, maybe treat it as a part of your practice routine, you practice a little bit every time you do your practice sessions amongst all of the other things that you have to practice. The second thing that I like to say is that when I learn a difficult song, at the beginning I'm not concerned about the rhythm, I try and play it round about correct but I'm more concerned about playing the correct notes in the correct sequence and then once I can do that I can always go back and then make sure that I'm playing it with the correct rhythm because that's easy since you've got the music file you can just slow it down and play along with the music file so that you're playing in the correct rhythm. Now remember I have put links in the description so uh, you may want to check that out um, links to other videos related to this topic as well as the, the channels that have the uh, transcriptions. Hopefully this was helpful in some way and if it was then obviously give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share, comment and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.